For a few days this week, I've been working on a simulation of the coronavirus that I was inspired to make because of the uh, article in the Washington Post that you may have seen. It was a fairly popular article that was shared around a lot. And I thought I could uh, at least emulate it and perhaps even make it better. So that's what I've tried to do. And I'm going to show you how far I've got. I've kind of reached a plateau in terms of the productivity of the um, what I've been generating. So I'm hoping that I can get some creative ideas from my audience uh, for how to improve the model or what um, kind of scenarios you would like to see played out. So let's just have a look, shall we? This is using a program called NetLogo that I learned a few years ago when I was doing research in the bioengineering lab. At the time I was, um, well, I won't bore you with the details, but I learned this specific tool a few years ago, and I don't know if it's the best tool out there, but it's free and it's very easy to get started with. So if you're interested in this model, I can email you the code and you can play around with uh, my model or you can just make a new one yourself. NetLogo actually comes pre-installed with a virus simulator. It's, it's just called Virus and it has most of the building blocks there to to start your very own virus simulation. I've changed it quite a bit. Maybe half of the lines of code have been completely um, rewritten and I've, I've taken away half of it and added you know, half of it. It's just completely my own creation. But it's a good place to get started uh, if you just want to understand how the language works. Right now, this is actually the hardest bit, is to get these dots to be evenly distributed at the beginning of the simulation, and they're going to kind of stay evenly distributed, which I'll explain. But each of these dots is actually not a person. As you can see, we're starting with... Uh, I've got this slider going between like 10 and 1,000. Right now it's at 690, it's just completely random. But each of these dots, there's not 690 dots on this page, they're families. Each of these dots is a family in a kind of house. So the families are of a random size between one and uh, between actually zero. You can see some some of these uh, houses are completely vacant, but between zero and five, I think it is. And they are all evenly distributed apart from each other. And when we press go, you can see these red dots are the infected ones. And we'll see how the infection spreads between these uh, people and these, these households. You see them sort of moving around there. I've, uh, so that was it. This is a pretty good simulation. You, you, it's completely random each time. So the results you get uh, differ each time um, you press play on this, but they'll be pretty similar. So let's go again and see if we can get a similar result. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of similar. You've got this, uh, this sort of steep increase almost, and then a kind of a sharp dip down and then a very slow decrease as people build up immunity. You can see that this red line represents the number of sick people there are in the population. And this pink line is how many people are immune. Those are people who have had the sickness and got over it. They're considered to be completely immune. This is the total number of um, people. We also have a number here, represent a line here representing how many people have died. Um, but that's very low at the moment because I've set the mortality rate to be only 1% of people who catch the illness, which is to represent sort of how the numbers that we're seeing at the moment depend. That's kind of assuming that you can get all of the medical treatment that modern science allows for. Of course, when hospitals start to fill up and they, they can't give you the kind of care that you need, we're going to perhaps see that percentage um, fatality increase uh, as they've seen it in uh, in Italy. But the way I've set up this simulation anyway uh, is that the, the these people, you can see even at the end of the simulation, they are they remained in the household. And I've set it up at the moment to simulate a kind of self-isolating scenario. So people are staying in their homes and they each of these dots is leaving their home once per week, I've got it so far. So once every seven days and there's a kind of uh it's called a tick it's like a the data is collected analyzed and sort of outputted every day every day is a tick in this case and people they pick up the infection and then five from another red dot they have a only a, a chance of being infected according to this infectiousness rating i put it up to 100 percent 
um, just sort of randomly just to see what would happen. So when someone encounters another red dot, when a blue dot encounters a red dot, the uh, the red dot, if they're on the same, it's called a patch in NetLogo, if they're on the same patch of space, they the, the blue dot will become infected with the virus. And once you're infected, you can walk around without noticing it, as in real life. You are not symptomatic and you're not um, you're not infectious either. I've set I've set the infectiousness to start after three days after getting the infection. The dot will become infectious and be able to infect other people. And after five days, they'll start to be symptomatic and they will stay at home permanently. The other people in that home will then catch it. Everyone else who's because people in the same house, they all come back to that one square for most of the week. That one patch. These um these regularly distributed sort of households. Everyone in that household will catch the infection in, in this scenario that I've designed. I don't know how representative that is. It seems to me that it's pretty hard not to catch an infectious illness like this if one of your family members has it. So what you get in this situation is people who do not realise that they have the infection are leaving their house. I've said it to be once a week at this um, in this particular scenario, but I've got this slider here called leave how often. Um, that I can change to make people leave more often or um, less frequently. So they catch the infection while they're out of the house, they don't realise they have it and they continue to leave the house once a week and, and spread it to other people. Those people return home to their houses and they infect the rest of their household who then also leaves the house once a week. I think the biggest limitation in this kind of simulation is that there's a very sort of low limit on the number of people who we can simulate at once. So we we could perhaps do a separate simulation of an entire country with uh, cities of various sizes and dif different distances apart. Uh, we could use this simulation to simulate perhaps a village or a town, but there's really not enough, you know, detail here. We, there's not enough scope to to be able to simulate an entire city or an entire country. So really the only thing that we can use this for is to compare different techniques. We can't use this to simulate, to find out how many people are going to die from this. We can't find out how many weeks it's going to be before all of this is over. The only thing we can do is to model different recommendations, different levels of social uh, I can't remember they call it suppression or mitigation, and see what that does to the the simulation, what that does to the number of people getting sick, number of people getting immune, and of course the number of people dying, which is what we are trying to avoid at all costs. I did consider coding in a situation where there's a finite number of hospital beds and any sick above a certain amount if there were no hospital beds available, would die instead of having a chance to get better. But then we run into the problem of having to estimate how many hospital beds there should be for this number of people. So in England, uh, I would have to know how many hospital beds per capita we have in the country to do that. We don't really need a simulation to know that the more hospital beds we have, the fewer people are going to die from this illness. We could perhaps use a more sophisticated version of a simulation like this to determine how many hospital beds we need, you know, in the next six months or a year. But to be honest, I don't think we're going to be able to fill that demand anyway. So it, it makes more sense just to try to make as many as possible. And by make, I of course don't mean literally make a bed. I mean a ventilator. I mean manufacturing ventilators and perhaps training people to be ventilator specialists. I think they're called respiratory therapists. I don't want this to be a video where I make any particular um, recommendations to the government. This is just sort of my own curiosity and interest. At the moment I have people getting better after 25 days, which is based on just a little bit of research that I saw. I don't know if I'm, I'm interpreting that correctly because the research that I was reading was actually about hospitalised patients only. I don't know how long it takes for people to recover when they have the very mild symptoms that's being treated at home. Uh, I suppose it, it probably takes a similar amount of time to get better and become immune. 
that figure of three days to become infectious after catching the infection yourself, I completely made that up. I have no idea. And I don't think anyone really knows when people become infectious after being exposed to the infection themselves. If you've read any good research on that subject and you have a better number, or rather you have a number that's supported by the research, then please let me know and I'll update my simulation with that number. I know there's a lot of anxiety around at the moment on this subject and I'm sorry there's not much I can do to help. I think as humans we have difficulties with uncertainty of, about our futures. It's it's very easy to, you know, when, when each day is pretty much like any other day and you can expect your year to pan out with most days being the same or very little variation, then there's so much of your mind that can be uh, put on habit. You don't have to think about, you know, where you're going to get your food, like thinking about whether you're going to have a, a job in, you know, a month, six months, a year, whatever. When you can rely on uh, things being constant like that, it's 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 much easier to then focus your energy on things that uh, that do matter, that you can change and have an effect on. When there's a lot of uncertainty about our future, it can be very stressful. And I hope you're all taking care of yourselves, you know, mentally and, and physically. It's especially difficult when people are being discouraged from going out to see each other. And I think that's a really important measure to take to protect each other and to protect ourselves. Is to just take ourselves out of the system and, and don't be a vector for the disease. But it is difficult and we're going to have a lot of difficulty in the future. I think while we're on this sort of upwards curve where the number of cases is increasing and things are just going to get worse before they get better, it, there's a lot of dread around that. And I think it's it's going to get a lot easier once the the cases number of cases starts to drop off and we can start to look forward to a better future. When things start improving, we can start to feel optimistic about the future. But at the moment, it's very difficult and there's just a lot of uncertainty and, and dread around around our future. But I remain optimistic. I think it's bad, but as a country and uh, you know many other countries in the world, we go through much worse things. You know, just in the last hundred years or so, I think people are resilient, and I think we're going to get through this, and we'll be all right. It's just a question of you know how long is it going to be like this, and when is it going to start to get better? And it's difficult, but. It's nothing we can't deal with or that we haven't deal with, dealt with before as a species. So best of luck to all of you and your families. Please keep each other safe. I'm going to keep trying to upload videos just to maintain a veneer of normality, try to keep everybody's spirits up. You know, I love to work on videos and uh, you know, I, I hope that the people watching them do appreciate you know, having a, a few minutes of a respite from having to think about the virus. After this video, I'll try not to bring it up, just because it's just nice to have a rest every once in a while. It's just on everybody's minds all the time, and I don't know about anyone else, but for me, it feels a bit like a nightmare. Like when I when I get distracted thinking about something else, and then suddenly I get reminded about the virus. It's like it's like my my stomach sinks a little bit every time I get reminded of it after I don't think for a while. You know, like when I wake up in the morning and the first time I think about the virus, it's like a punch in the gut. <laughs> But anyway, please uh, leave your suggestions about the simulation and let me know if you want me to email you the uh, the code and you can download NetLogo for free online. I'll leave a link in the description. You can email me at poetheperson, all one word, at gmail.com and ask me and I'll, I'll reply. I'll send you the code if you want to play with it yourself. It's a really easy program. If you've never got into coding before and you want to try out an easy programming language with some nice visual uh, results that you can make yourself, pro you know, little visual projects you can work on. They've got a lot of pre-installed simulations that you can run. Like I said, there's the virus one, there's predators and prey, there's butterflies, you know, all sorts of fun little projects that you can just load up the code. It's already downloaded with the program and you can change the parameters yourself just to see how the little critters uh, react to your playing God. It's, it's, it's a good fun time. <laughs> all the best to all of you and I hope to see you again soon.